Several artists have created computer programs to make art throughout the course of the last 50 years, which I refer to as algorithmic art. The approach necessitates the artists writing comprehensive code while keeping the intended visual result in mind. A pioneer in this field is artist Harold Cohen, who in 1973 designed the computer program Aaron to generate drawings that followed a set of rules that he had devised. Cohen was one of the first practitioners of this genre. Cohen continued to improve and modify Aaron for the remainder of his professional life, but the program's essential design remained unchanged, it performed tasks according to the artist's instructions. New innovations combine artificial intelligence and machine learning technologies, which give the computer greater autonomy in the creation of pictures. In order to make artificial intelligence art, artists design algorithms that do not follow a set of rules, but rather learn a certain aesthetic by examining thousands of photos over time. After then, the algorithm attempts to develop new images that comply to the aesthetics that it has discovered. To begin, the artist selects a selection of photos to feed the algorithm, a process I refer to as pre-curation, which is short for before curation. The vast majority of artificial intelligence artworks that have appeared in recent years have made use of a family of algorithms known as Generative Adversarial Networks GANs. These algorithms, which were first presented by computer scientist Ian Goodfellow in 2014, are referred described as adversarial since they have two opposing sides to them, a random picture is generated by one, while the other has been trained, through the input, how to assess these images and determine which ones are most consistent with the input. For example, a portrait artist may input portraits from the last 500 years into a generative AI system, which would produce new portraits. The algorithms then attempt to mimic the input photos, resulting in a diverse set of output images. It is necessary for the artist to sift through the output photographs and pick those that he or she desires to utilize, a process I refer to as post-curation. At all stages of the process, the artist maintains an active role, he or she is heavily involved in pre- and post-curation activities, and he or she may also alter the algorithm as necessary to get the desired results. Is it a case of serendipity or malfunction? Even the artist in charge of the process might be taken by surprise by the visuals produced by the generative algorithm. For example, if a gun is fed portraits, it may end up developing a sequence of distorted faces in the process. What are we supposed to make of this? Several artists have created computer programs to make art throughout the course of the last 50 years, which I refer to as algorithmic art. The approach necessitates the artist's writing comprehensive code while keeping the intended visual result in mind. A pioneer in this field is artist Harold Cohen, who in 1973 designed the computer program Aaron to generate drawings that followed a set of rules that he had devised. Cohen was one of the first practitioners of this genre. Cohen continued to improve and modify Aaron for the remainder of his professional life but the program's essential design remained unchanged, it performed tasks according to the artist's instructions. New innovations combine artificial intelligence and machine learning technologies, which give the computer greater autonomy in the creation of pictures. In order to make artificial intelligence art, artists design algorithms that do not follow a set of rules, but rather learn a certain aesthetic by examining thousands of photos over time. After then, the algorithm attempts to develop new images that comply to the aesthetics that it has discovered. To begin, the artist selects a selection of photos to feed the algorithm, a process I refer to as pre-curation, which is short for before curation. The vast majority of artificial intelligence artworks that have appeared in recent years have made use of a family of algorithms known as Generative Adversarial Networks GANs. These algorithms, which were first presented by computer scientist Ian Goodfellow in 2014, are referred described as adversarial since they have two opposing sides to them, a random picture is generated by one, while the other has been trained, through the input, how to assess these images and determine which ones are most consistent with the input. For example, a portrait artist may input portraits from the last 500 years into a generative AI system, which would produce new portraits. The algorithms then attempt to mimic the input photos, resulting in a diverse set of output images. It is necessary for the artist to sift through the output photographs and pick those that he or she desires to utilize, a process I refer to as post-curation. At all stages of the process, the artist maintains an active role, he or she is heavily involved in pre- and post-curation activities, and he or she may also alter the algorithm as necessary to get the desired results. 
Is it a case of serendipity or malfunction? Even the artist in charge of the process might be taken by surprise by the visuals produced by the generative algorithm. For example, if a gun is fed portraits, it may end up developing a sequence of distorted faces in the process. What are we supposed to make of this? I use these two examples to demonstrate how artists might experiment with artificial intelligence technologies in a variety of ways. Although the finished photos may have taken the artists by surprise, they did not appear out of nowhere, there was a process that led to them, and there was definitely an element of intention behind them. Despite this, many people are suspicious about artificial intelligence art. Jerry Salts, the Pulitzer Prize-winning art critic, has stated that he believes the work produced by AI artists, such as The Butcher's Son, to be boring and uninteresting. Perhaps some of the detractors are accurate in their assessments. For example, in the case of the warped portraits, one could argue that the resulting photographs aren't really interesting, they're essentially just clones of pre-curated inputs that have been given a unique twist. However, it is not just about the end image. What it's all about is the creative process, a process that involves both an artist and a computer working together to explore new visual shapes in groundbreaking ways. This is why I am certain that AI-produced pieces are conceptual art, a genre that dates back to the 1960s and in which the concept and process of creating a work are more essential than the final product. So, what about The Butcher's Son, one of the pieces Salts criticized for being boring? It was just awarded the Lumen Prize, which is a prize dedicated to technologically enhanced art. Take a look at ICANN. A considerable level of control over the creative process has always been exercised by a human artist when artificial intelligence has been employed to create works of art. Consider the possibility that an art-making machine may be trained to make art on its own, with little or no human intervention. With ICANN, Artificial Intelligence Creative Adversarial Network, our lab has built what might be regarded of as a nearly autonomous artist that has mastered current styles and aesthetics while still being able to generate original and inventive artworks of its own. People sincerely enjoy ICANN's work and are unable to tell the difference between it and the work of human artists. Its sculptures have been shown all around the world, and one of them was sold at auction for $16,000. With a strong emphasis on novelty. The idea offered by psychologist Colin Martindale served as the foundation for the construction of ICANN. He predicted that many artists would endeavor to make their works more appealing by rejecting conventional forms, topics, and styles that the general public has become accustomed to seeing in artwork. Artists appear to intuitively realize that doing something different will increase their chances of arousing and capturing the attention of their audience. In other words, novelty is the order of the day. During the development of ICANN, we employed an algorithm known as the Creative Adversarial Network, which pushes ICANN to cope with two opposing forces at the same time. Aiming for a more aesthetic understanding of existing art, it attempts to do so on one end of the spectrum. On the other hand, if it creates a work of its own that is too closely modeled by an established style, it will be penalized for doing so. The ICANN, on the other hand, adheres to what Martindale refers to as the least effort concept, according to which too much innovation will turn off viewers. This thoughtful mix assures that the work produced will be innovative while yet being within the boundaries of what is considered acceptable. Ideally, it will result in the creation of something new that builds on the foundation of what currently existing. Leaving ICANN to its own device. We don't choose certain photos to teach ICANN a particular aesthetic or style, as many artists who make AI art will do. Rather than using 80,000 photos, we supplied the computer 80,000 images that represented the Western art canon over the preceding five centuries. It's similar to an artist enrolling in a comprehensive course in art history, with no specific emphasis on a particular style or genre. The machine generates an image that may then be printed with the push of a button. It is likely that we will be surprised by the breadth, intelligence, and variety of the artworks. As part of our previous work, my colleagues and I devised an algorithm that evaluated the inventiveness of each given artwork while also taking the painting's place within the background of art history into consideration, see sidebar, below. ICANN may utilize this piece of work to assess the level of originality in each of its separate pieces. Because ICANN has also learned the titles that artists and art historians have used in the past, the algorithm is capable of even naming the works that it produces based on their titles. It gave one of them the name Orgy, and another the name The Beach at Porto. 
The algorithm prefers to generate abstract works rather than figurative ones, as shown in the following example. Our investigation into how the machine is able to comprehend the progression of art history may provide an explanation, see the sidebar at the bottom of this article. Given its mandate to create something new, ICANN is likely to draw inspiration from more recent movements in art history, such as abstract art, which first gained popularity in the 20th century and continues until this day. What the computer is incapable of. While ICANN's artistic approach is thorough, there is something that is lacking, however, while the algorithm may produce visually beautiful images, it does so in an isolated creative realm that is devoid of social context. Human artists, on the other hand, are influenced by people, locations, and political events to create their work. They produce art to convey tales and make sense of the world around them. I can, on the other hand, can produce artwork that human curators can then contextualize in our culture and link to what is going on in the world around us. That's exactly what we did with Alternative Facts, The Multifaces of Untruth, a title we gave to a series of photographs created by ICANN that struck us as particularly serendipitous in terms of its publication at the right moment. Of all, just because robots are capable of producing art almost autonomously does not imply that they will eventually take the place of artists. Simply said, it implies that artists will have an extra creative instrument at their disposal, one with which they may even be able to interact. I frequently make the comparison between AI art and photography. When photography was initially established in the early 19th century, it was not considered art because, after all, the majority of the labor was done by machine. The tastemakers resisted at first, but gradually conceded, a century later, photography was recognized as a legitimate fine art medium. Currently, images are on display in museums and sold at auction for exorbitant sums of money. I have no doubt that art created by artificial intelligence will follow in the same footsteps as traditional art.